Hello, my name is Dan Peterson and I'm a professor of plant and soil sciences and director of the Institute for Genomics, Biocomputing and Biotechnology at Mississippi State University. Today I would like to talk to you about Cassipii, Odysseys, Reunions, and the power of polyploidy. My key collaborators on this research include Jonathan Wendell, Corinne Grover, and Justin Conover of Iowa State University, Josh Udall of the United States Department of Agriculture, and from my own lab, Tony Eric, Chuan Yu Xu, and Adam Thrash. Funding for the research I will describe was provided by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the National Science Foundation. The tribe Gassipii consists of nine closely related genera in the dicot plant family Malvaceae. The largest genus in the tribe is Gassipium, with roughly 50 extant species. Gassipium contains species we refer to as cottons because some of its species provide the cotton fibers that are so highly valued by human beings. Gassipium's closest relatives are Cochia and Gassipioides. I will be talking about all three of these genera today. Many years ago, the cotton diploid species were placed into genome groups based on their levels of chromosome similarity. These genome groups are designated by the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and K. Yes, K. For reasons that are not entirely clear, the letters H, I, and J were skipped over in the creation of the cotton genome alphabet. Of diploids, only the A genome species, Gossypium arboreum and Gossypium herbaceum, produce spinnable cotton fibers. The figure at the bottom of the slide shows cultivated Gossypium arboreum and wild Gossypium herbaceum seeds with long white seed fibers next to seeds from species representing other fiber-poor letter groups. This map shows the locations and natural ranges of diploid Gossypium species. Note that the Gossypium A and E genome species are found in Asia and Africa. The B and F species are found in Africa only. The C, G, and K species are found in Australia. And the D genome species are found in the New World, that is North America and South America. The progenitor of the D genome cottons appears to have made its way to the New World approximately 6.6 .6 million years ago. The New World suited the D genome progenitor well, and it gave rise to multiple D species. Of note, the D genome species are referred to as the subgenus Husingenia. However, it is unlikely that I would be talking to you about cotton today if it hadn't been for a polyploidy event involving an odyssey and a reunion of sorts. About one to two million years ago, an African A genome species, equally similar to Gossypium arboreum and Gossypium herbaceum, made the long journey from Africa to Mexico. While it is unclear how either the D genome progenitor or the A genome species made the trip from Africa to the New World, it has been speculated that cotton propagules traveled this long distance on floating rafts of debris. Hybridization of the A genome propagule with a D genome species similar to Gossypium ramondii occurred, and chromosome doubling gave rise to a plant with two A and two D subgenomes. The AD allopolyploid was the progenitor of seven New World tetraploid species. Two of the allotetraploid species, Gossypium hirsutum, also known as upland cotton, and Gossypium barbadens, also known as Pima cotton, collectively account for 98% of cotton fiber production today. These allopolyploids have superior fiber properties and produce higher yields of fiber than do the A genome diploids. Although fiber trait originates from the A genome diploid parent, 
It is the combination of A and D genomes that made Gossypium hirsutum and Gossypium barbadens such superior plants for fiber production. Here is a world map showing the natural locations of the seven AD allopolyploid cotton species. Gossypium hirsutum plants are largely found in Central America and Gossypium barbadens populations are found in Peru and Ecuador. Of note, Gossypium ekmanianum and Gossypium stevensii are not accepted as species by some cotton biologists due to their highly localized distributions and their relative similarities to Gossypium hirsutum. And now I'd like to discuss a study that we published in 2019 in Genome Biology and Evolution. This study was focused on the evolution of the subgenus Husingenia, the D genome cottons. The Husingenia can be further divided into sections and subsections, as shown here. Note that Gossypium ramondii, the species most similar to the D genome parent of the AD allopolyploids, is in a subsection by itself. To better understand speciation within Husingenia, my colleagues and I sequenced the genomes of one or more representatives of each D species. In our comparative genomic study, the high quality Gossypium ramondii genome sequence was used as a reference, while the single F genome species, Gossypium longicalix, was used as an outgroup. We looked at nuclear and chloroplast genomes to determine if Husingenia is monophyletic. We were so excited by our findings that we made a music video to reveal them. The song, Who's in Genia, which will be played shortly, is based on Epic by Faith No More. I wrote the new lyrics, play all the instruments and sing the song. My colleagues, including Jonathan Wendell and Corinne Grover, played key roles in the video itself. While the Who's in Genia video has been finished for a couple of years, due to COVID, the Polyploidy and Evolution in Plants Conference represents the video's debut in front of an audience of plant scientists. Without further ado, here is Who's in Genia. To old world land A teleprophic your stop on the Mexican sand This bad mother hummer gave rise, you see To subgenus who's in Genia better known as D Well, D's they diverged and dispersed, it's true Throughout Mexico to Baja, Arizona, Peru There are 13 or more species, but no interest that have spawned If they hadn't had a visit from a cousin across the pond A limp-bearing species with an A pedigree Made some allopolyploids with Peruvian D Two of the descendants are loved and revered Cause the fibers are whiter and softer than my beard DNA is history on the stream And they indeed turn pattern into a king Of our days and our nights And if my girls always says it It's gotta be right While only one these species Help to make her sweater The others may have cheese That can make cotton even better Now Hootin' is typically divided into two D subgenus sections But is that the thing to do? Our studies shows the sections Aren't monophyletic As there's been some white exchanges Of material genetics DNA is history On the stream Now here comes the soap opera. You and he's got busy with.
with an African stray Whose ITS sequences it carries today More recently, Mindy Eye and Oidy's had a fling Oidy's got Mindy Eye's quarter plus but no engagement ring The arborescent messages would be a true claim Except arrogant from Kornima appears to a stray See his quarter plus were barred from David Sony Eye Should it be a new species? Then it's not why! DNA is history So, in conclusion, we found that Who's Ingenia is not monophyletic. Indeed, neither of its two sections, section Who's Ingenia and section Arioxalum, are monophyletic. Also, the D genome species Cassipium cassipioides, not to be confused with the genus Cassipioides, has ITS repeat sequences that were thought to be unique to extant African species. Introgression of DNA from an African species outside of Who's Ingenia has occurred. Moreover, Gossypium gossypioides has chloroplasts that are derived from Gossypium remondii. These species are both in section Arioxalum, but in different subsections. This event is much more recent than the African intergression event. Gossypium eridum plants from Colima, Mexico, have chloroplasts that are originally from Gossypium davidsonii. These species are in different Who's Ingenia sections. 
Another takeaway from the study was that although the Huizengenia progenitor arrived in the New World 6.6 .6 million years ago, essentially all diversity from D genome species is from rapid divergence occurring 0.5 to 2 million years ago. In other words, D genome speciation wasn't particularly successful until fairly recently. Real quickly, I'd like to discuss another genome biology and evolution paper. This one is from 2018, and the genera Cochia and Gasipioides are its focus. Why study Cochia and Gasipioides, two genera of no economic value? Cochia and Gasipioides are the closest living relatives of Gasipium, the cottons, and this gives them inherent value as outgroups. Cochia and Cassipioides are each other's closest relatives, yet they are separated by, well, we will discuss this shortly. Cassipioides and Cochia have a 1x chromosome number of 12, whereas Cassipium and most other Cassipii genera are 1x equals 13. The reduction in chromosome number exhibited by Cochia and Cassipioides is something that piques the interest of chromosome biologists. In addition, Cochia and Gasipioides have small genomes compared to diploid Gasipium species. Lastly, Gasipioides and Cochia are beautiful plants and are important parts of the ecosystems in which they reside. To me, the most interesting thing about Cochia and Gasipioides is that these two closely related genera are literally on exact opposite sides of the globe from one another. In other words, they are antipodes. If you were to travel from eastern Africa, where Gasipioides species are found, down through the center of the earth and out the other side, you would find yourself in Hawaii, where the Cochia live. And guess what? I've got a music video about Cochia and Gasipioides too. Yes, I made this video before the Huizengenia video. It is a little rougher, both musically and aesthetically. It features my kids. I literally got them to act in the video, although they had never heard the song. The song, Cochia, is based on the Beach Boys hit, Kokomo. I wrote the new lyrics, played the instruments, and sang the vocals. I hope you enjoy this and learn something about Cochia and Gasipioides. Pretty red flower, Pacific Island shower, volcanoes and mallows, stingrays in the shallows, and people arrive, now hard to stay alive, endangered in the Hawaiian Islands. It's a genus Cochia. They are members, you see, of the tribe Gossipii. It seems a twist of fate. Sent the Pono Cochia. Literally clear around the world. How they got there is a mystery. The genus Cochia. Six continents and counting Cassipioides master of Trifonetic Gascar Birds that pollinate the humans exclusively for Bukokia A million years in the Utopia Their people stole the show Nowhere for you to go I'll make a graft and put it on a raft It seems their DNA It looks like oysters and cake that sipium ten million years ago. In southern Africa, K and oysters still stay tight. Then by the way, Cochia got on a one-way flight. Poor little Cochia, sipium surmounting six continents and counting. Cassipioides, master of Trifonetic Gascar Birds that pollinate the humans that you see for Bukokia A million years in the Utopia Three people stole the show Nowhere for you to go Take a step
stand, Ginger or Mary Ann. Some cokey SC values match Neutral repeat activity Net loss of some 10,000 genes Now there are only three Of the cokey SBC In conclusion, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to speak at this conference. I wish I could be there in person with you. If you would like to check out the Who's Ingenia and Kokia videos, do a Google search for the word Mojo Mudcat. My YouTube channel should be the first thing that pops up. Now, are there any questions?